Supervolcanoes are known as one of the greatest threats to life on Earth, and new research says they could be even more dangerous than previously imagined. Here's what you need to know. Supervolcanoes stay active and dangerous even in the period after super eruptions, according to a new study in the journal Communications Earth and Environment. The largest eruptions at these sites, known as super eruptions, are capable of causing mass death on a global scale, according to The Independent. But the new research centers on the idea of what happens after those largest eruptions, in order to help understand when catastrophe might strike in the future. Feldspar and zircon mineral records from Mount Toba in Indonesia showed that magma had continued to ooze out within that supervolcano's caldera for 5,000 to 13,000 years after its super eruption 74,000 years ago, according to the study's lead author cited by SciTech Daily. The post-super eruption oozing means that eruptions can occur even when no liquid magma is found underneath the volcano, which means that the volcanoes still present hazards even after their largest eruptions, and also adds to our understanding of how supervolcanoes develop over time. Toba's last super eruption sent out plumes of ash and debris that spread for thousands of miles and caused global temperatures to plummet, according to National Geographic, with some scientists suggesting this pushed humans to the brink of extinction. Learning when and how eruptible magma accumulates, and in what state the magma is in before and after such eruptions, is critical for understanding supervolcanoes, according to the study's lead author. Working against that kind of scenario, NASA's plan for combating a possible eruption at Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming is to drill up to 6 miles, or 10 kilometers, down and pump in water at high pressure to cool it. According to the BBC, the water would circulate and return at a temperature of around 350 degrees centigrade, or 662 degrees Fahrenheit, which would slowly extract heat from the volcano. The cost of that anti-heating system is estimated to be around $3.46 billion, but is considered by NASA to be the most viable solution to a potential super-eruption. The plan would come up with huge risks, however. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to cool it from there, it could make the cap over the magma chamber brittle and vulnerable to fracturing, according to Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology. You might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released, he says, which according to the BBC could actually trigger the eruption that the procedure is designed to avoid. As an alternative to this, NASA's idea is to drill into the supervolcano from the lower sides, starting outside the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park and pulling out the heat from the underside of the magma chamber. This prevents heat coming up from below, reaching the top of the chamber, which is where the real threat arises, according to Wilcox. However, a process like this, cooling Yellowstone to a point where it posed no threat at all, where just cold rock remained, would take tens of thousands of years because the rate of cooling would happen at around one meter per year, according to the BBC. So even our best idea for dealing with super eruptions is kind of a long shot. This is basically why a separate study in the Nature Communications Journal recently concluded that worrying about supervolcanoes is essentially a waste of time and money. The argument goes that combating them is pretty futile, so we should instead come up with plans to deal with volcanic events at seven smaller volcanic sites. The researchers say that while eruptions from supervolcanoes happen at intervals of hundreds of thousands of years, lower magnitude eruptions, rated between 3 and 6 on the volcanic explosivity index, occur far more regularly and still have the potential to cause mass disruption if they occur in one of seven key pinch points citing the infamous 2010 eruption in Iceland, which grounded flights across Europe and lost the global economy $5 billion, the research points out that a significant portion of critical infrastructure is located near lower magnitude volcanic centers. Near those centers, ash clouds, volcanic gases, landslides, mud flows, earthquakes, and tsunamis could cause massive disruption by snapping undersea cables, destroying crops, damaging power plants, electric grids, and pipelines, and blocking maritime passages, the study says. In a future scenario where these lower magnitude eruptions interact with key societal vulnerabilities, they could cascade us toward catastrophe, according to the study's lead author. Gizmodo summarizes the point, describing how if international communications networks, global supply chains, and financial systems were disrupted, in some regions an eruption could even result in civil unrest and see governments fall.
The seven pinch points listed in the report are the northwestern United States, Taiwan, the Chinese North Korean border, the Luzon Strait, the Strait of Malacca, the Mediterranean, and the North Atlantic. In one compelling case study, it says that an eruption in the northwest United States involving either Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak, or Mount Baker, which would rank at around 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, would likely cause mudflows and ash clouds near Seattle. The result of those would be that activity at airports and seaports nearby, which constitute 2.5% of the U.S.'s total traffic, would be forced to stop. From there, estimated losses would reach $7.63 billion of global GDP over a five-year period, according to the study. Other nightmare scenarios conjured by the study include devastation to tech industries near Taipei, where much of the world's computer chip manufacturing is based or damage to undersea cables in the Mediterranean. It also focuses on restricted shipping access through the Suez Canal, the Indonesian archipelago, the Luzon Strait, plus disruptions to aerial traffic between London and New York. The authors of that study emphasize that their point is not to scare people, rather it is to say that we should work towards reducing the fragility of systems to these kinds of events. But here at Tomo News, we already know that there's no point in being afraid of the end of the world. That's why we simply stare into the fiery abyss and just enjoy the cool shapes and stuff. Why exactly is it so satisfying to stare at piles of molten magma? We don't know, but that's not exactly a reason not to do it. Let's just have one more. Okay, no really, this one actually is the last one. Ah. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.